Okay, it has been an a, lo a long time, like a very long time since I've made an actual video video. You know, you guys have been seeing like, I don't know, full gameplay upload, highlight uploads, right? And uh, I know some of you guys have been missing the um, educational, educational content. So here we are, okay? We are going to... Um, Today's topic, as you can see from the title and the thumbnail, is uh, going to be Kaisa. I'm going to give you like a mini Kaisa guy because she is quite good. Um, <clears throat> I think more in the lower ranks, um, but especially with a support that can all in, so like a CC support that can all in, like Leona, Nautilus, Pike, whatever, right? Um, you probably don't want to play with your like Yumi or something. Um, <clears throat> but when paired with some kind of like, I guess people call it like kill lane, right? It, I think she has a lot of, um, she can find a lot of value. And actually, she's super fun. I know you guys like that, right? So I would recommend Kaisa, um, maybe like Diamond below and then situationally like above Diamond, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, today, the format of today's video is basically going to be um, mini guide featuring uh her items her current like item setups okay runes item setups and then um the more important part is how do we play her and at what times okay you're gonna learn how to pvp in lane in the mid game with q upgrade and then late game okay and they're, they're very three very distinct phases i think for um kaisa pvp laning q upgrade and then uh post q upgrade okay so um let's first dive into uh the practice tool i'll give you i'll show you guys the setups i use and uh we'll start from there okay so with kaisa usually we want to take uh always lethal tempo i am a presence of mind fan uh so we never run out of mana but if you are a psycho you can go triumph um which is pretty poggers just make sure uh you have mana for full combo when you're like all ending and stuff and it's always bloodline here okay unless um you are a bork enthusiast uh kraken bork rage blade enthusiast which i don't recommend by the way personally um i haven't had too much um too much of a good time with that but uh yeah i would recommend bloodline and then uh, it's either cool or cut down okay cut down would be like two plus two or more uh frontliners that have a bunch of hp uh maybe like a super tank or like mundo or something but ku gets a lot of value value in kaisa specifically because uh not only are usually ulting in or all in and then you know they're gonna drop to zero hp you're gonna go in when they're like half or lower um her passive proc is gonna be um uh benefit from ku uh pretty much every single time because you're gonna pass a proc and then they die right and then for runes, um, there's some like variants, but pretty much it's going to be inspiration tree. Okay, I would not recommend anything else. You could try Taste of Blood, Bounty Hunter, and the Domination, but I don't recommend that. I think Free Boots, Biscuits, or um, Free Boots, Cosmic, or Biscuits, Cosmic, any combination of this is what you want to do, okay? <clears throat> I personally go Free Boots so I can spend my um, money on uh, AD to get our Q upgrade faster, okay? And um, <clears throat> let's go into the practice tool and now show you how to uh, some PvP tricks, okay? And then uh, with these PvP mechanical tricks, you should you should have already seen all these if you watch my uh, Kaisa guide from a long time ago. But just as a refresher, assuming you haven't seen it in a while or if you haven't seen it at all, um, we're going to show you um, the necessary mechanics for Kaisa, okay? And then uh, let's show you ones we can do with just the Doran's Blade, okay? Level one. Level one, level three, something like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, first we need to know is very simple. Okay, you need to learn how to ISO Q. So uh, if you're a complete beginner at Kaiser, this, this guide will be aimed towards, I don't know, at least plat player and above, okay? Or hopefully diamond player and above. But if you're new, well, I'll teach you some nuance, okay? Kaiser Q is gonna be used for, um, the, to get the most damage, you want to isolate your target, okay? So if you have multiple things inside your Q range, it's going to split your damage in half, your Q damage in half. So you're usually going to isolate your target. And it's going to be very important because if you are in the middle of these targets and you need to find a way to isolate, you could use your you could use your flash, you could use your ulti, you could use your E, anything like that, okay? You can E4 to enable your isolated Q, okay? Anything like that, okay? So remember, ISO Q. And the second thing, um, second small trick with Q, we can kind of gloss over this, is if you know it does more damage to minions below 35 percent health so uh i like have a clip of me like killing all the minions that are all 30 percent health and then like q executes them all well, not, it doesn't execute but it does more damage to them all um and basically kills them all off at the same time well i'll probably be too lazy to put it up there we'll see um okay next <clears throat> important this is very important because you will use this very often w flash now w flash the way it works is uh when you w you have a little cast time wind up 
and then the W comes out. Okay, so if you W, you're gonna flash right before it comes out to redirect uh, the path. Uh, so it shoots out. So uh, let's say we're point A right now. Okay, where I'm standing is point A. Point B is my target. This is dummy. Okay, so if you W flash, you'll always hit point B. Okay, but where the W starts from depends on where you flash to. So if I flash to here, point C, right? It will still aim at the target. It just comes out from your flash location. And you can like do it like super delayed, right? I mean, there's like a thing called Phantom W that was uh, taught to me by K-Drama. If you do it like frame perfect, it looks funny. I don't know. I don't know if I can do it, but... Okay, I did it. First try. <laughs> okay, basically, I would not recommend practicing this i don't even know how to do this consistently i don't personally use it but you can basically frame perfect your w flash so that it's like a visual bug where it looks like it's going in it looks like it's going like this like straight up and through this guy but in fact the physical projectile is like uh not it's basically a visual bug okay if you if you so want to try and practice it and uh do it, go for it. But basically, it just it just looks like a regular W, but it's actually a W flash. You know what I mean? But whatever. Enough about that. Okay. Um. So W flash important in lane because in the two v two all in, usually speaking, when you aim the ADC, there's a bunch of stuff in the way like minions and uh, enemy support. And so when you're when you're hitting this guy in the back, right? You need to find a way to W him. So you're gonna W flash, right? And the reason why we need to learn how to W flash is because it's very hard to react to, even if they know it's coming. They have to pre-flash it if you W flash. Because the thing is, is that uh, if you flash W, it's actually quite easy to react to, right? They can spot react to it. Um, Cause they're like, oh she, she's flashing, I gotta do something. But if you W flash at the last second, it's practically impossible to dodge, okay? And the reason why W flash is so important in landing phase is because the guy you W is the guy you're gonna try and kill. Okay? If you're in a 2v2 all in and uh, Leona goes in and you W Leona, you can no longer kill the ADC most of the time, okay? You no longer have enough damage to kill the ADC. Okay, your W is the sign that you're going to kill this guy. Okay, so when you W, whoever you W, make sure you're going to finish them off. Like, you're committed. Like, once you W, you're done. That's your play in laning phase. And uh, it's not as important out of lane, although W flash can be very useful for something like, um, I don't know, surprise, like, like, surprise one shot, right? Trying to proc passive, right? Um, but mostly for the laning phase. Okay, and then uh, the other main mechanics you need to know, okay, <laughs> sorry if uh, you're falling asleep during this because you know all of this. Um, I assume, sorry, I would assume you know all of this if you are at least diamond player, okay. Uh, <clears throat> other mechanics you need to know, okay. Um, second most important, R flash, or sorry, um, RW, okay. You need to be able to RW. It's, it's, it's the same idea as W flash in the sense that it's hard to react to and W is the guy you're going to kill. You're going to W the guy you need to kill. Um, it's just now you use your ulti instead of flash, okay? And the way you practice this is you pick a very specific spot. You pick a very specific spot around your target. Like, I'm going to pick right here. And you W mid-air at the target, okay? Like that. And uh, the order, the way uh, for a short-range ulti, level 6, level 11 ulti, is that you do it immediately. So I R W pretty much immediately, like that. No delay. Okay, and there are issues if you do this at level 16, which I will show you right now. I mean, your traveling is so long in the ulti that you might mess it up. Like that. Okay, so even though I picked my spot and I fired right at the target, the W actually fired before I even got to my destination. Okay, so rem reminder, okay, at long range, at long range, make sure you're already traveling. Such that your W will come out right as you land at your destination. Okay, along with level 16 ulti. I know it's a very niche case, but I have lost a team fight because of it. Okay, so if you are a Kaisa enthusiast, you should know this. All right, and then um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it for the uh, main mechanics. Okay, there are nuances to playing Kaisa, such that um, let's uh, let's 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 go to our items here. Okay, so R, uh, W flash and R W. Uh, this is what you need 90% of the time. Okay, outside of the basic stuff like ISO Q. Okay, and now let me show you some um, team fight um, oriented um, kind of ideas. Let me see if we can. Do oh yeah, if you want to cancel upgrade, you click the upgrade and press B immediately. Okay, this is, it's a timing thing. Go practice in the practice tool. Whatever. There's some nuances I can teach you. Okay, the first is 
Iso Q is going to be your main source of damage when you get your Q upgrade, okay? If you're doing the uh, build, which I'll recommend, I'll tell you um, later. But Iso Q, right, when you hit like level 9, is going to be your main source of damage. So you need to make sure you Iso Q. And what that means is, let's say you're ulting, okay? Let's say you're ulting. You want to pick a spot. Let's say you were fighting. This is the ADC and this is the support, okay? You don't want to, you don't want to like ulti here and split your Q, okay? You want to kill the ADC. You need to make sure that you pick a spot where your ISO Q will do most damage. Um, sorry, don't uh, Q mid ulti because it will, in fact, um, do the same thing as W, um, which is it will Q from where you ult you press Q. You want to you want to uh, ulti then Q. So we want to <laughs> so we want to combine these two ideas, R W and ISO Q. You need to pick the exact spot. You're going to W and then you're going to ISO Q. Okay. R W ISO Q auto attack. Okay? Simple. More nuanced stuff. Um, ulti is an auto attack cancel. Like so. Okay? And what you can do to surprise people in an all in is you get four stacks. Like so. And then you proc passive with your auto cancel. Ulti. Okay? One, two, three, four, ulti. Like that. Uh, to get your um, ISO Q, we talked about using your ulti. Picking a spot so you can get your ISO Q off, right? And then uh, another way to do it is to use your E. Very simple, okay? Very simple. Not usually not like kiting out of a fight, but you could if you're if you find the angle, right? <laughs> but mostly for getting closer. And this is going to be very is a very important pattern um, when you get to your uh, PD uh, IE, okay? You E closer, ISO Q, auto attack, and start stacking, okay? And uh, I'll talk about stacking. Um, I'll talk about stacking in a second. Okay. And then, um, so E is you can use it to gap close and uh, get your ice get in range for your ISO Q and or to outplay after you've ulted in. Okay. So the idea is we're gonna RW ISO Q then E. Okay. You can fit an auto attack in there to auto cancel E depending on how much time you have. Okay. I know I missed my W there, but you, you get the idea, right? Like that, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, if you want to do max damage, uh, or sorry, max outplay idea with upgraded E, you ult in, you W, auto attack cancel E, all right? Something like that, okay? Um, and, uh, of course, flash ideas are all the same. I mean, you can ult in, E, and then flash, right? So, like, an example would be, like, um, let's say there's a threat here and you need to one-shot this guy. And then you could, I don't know, something like that, right? You flash your first reaction, send your QE, and then uh, you can E, something like that, okay? E for a second, I'll play. And then everything applies to stopwatch, okay? E is a solution out of stopwatch. Flash is a solution out of stopwatch, okay? So it'd be like OTNW, ISO Q, flash, uh, sorry, uh, E, then auto attack, stopwatch, flash, something like that, okay? But don't worry about that. If you're, if you're very confused, uh, don't worry about that. You will figure it out as you play Markaisa, okay? And you play around with the idea of ulting in and outplaying with E and Flash. So, um, the next idea we want to talk about is... Um, <clears throat> wait, what is the next idea we want to talk about? Oh, yes. Stacking, okay? So, uh, I know I mentioned stacking earlier, but basically, uh, uh, your damage pattern in lane is going to be W, hitting the W. Okay, and so you need to know how to W flash to get the exact target you want every single time. Okay, and you should also practice W flash sideways in case there are minions in the way. Something like this is very important, okay? Because at the higher level, okay, maybe masters and above, you need to know this. Um, maybe GM and above, you need to know this, okay? People will start blocking W flash. Okay, so then what you do is W flash sideways. And you'll be like, okay, good luck, bro. Good luck dodging this, you know what I'm saying? People are going to know you're going to do it, okay? So you're gonna, they're gonna like start putting minions like right in front of them and stuff. So you start doing something like that. Okay. So W flash very important for lane. That's your damage. That's where your damage is gonna come from. So you can proc passive. Mid game. Okay. When you uh, this is this is this is what I would recommend you guys to do. I'm um, sorry, let's not sell boots. I would recommend this is the build path I recommend. Cookie cutter build path I would recommend every single game. You need to start Doran's blade for your Q upgrade. Then we're gonna buy a Dirk, a Noon Quiver, and a Pickaxe from a Mythic component. And this gives you Q upgrade. Okay. And the reason why we do this is so that we have Q upgrade as fast as possible. That's when you spike in terms of power with your level nine isolated Q. And um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and, and basically this is when you you're strongest. 
Okay. Now, if you're not a fan of the Dirk because you don't want to build collector or you feel like it's a waste of money, you're going to sell it. Then, of course, what you're going to have to do is something um, a little bit more jank, like a second pickaxe, which uh, <laughs> uh, I think I, I personally would say don't do this. Okay. Um, the other way is to actually fully build the Kraken Slayer and then uh, two long swords. Okay, I think it's giving me the key upgrade early because I have I'm level 16. But um, play the ring king, Kraken, double long sword. This is your pure path. No, no collector, no Dirk path. Okay, your pure path. This is when you get key upgrade. Your key upgrade won't be as strong. Okay, I personally do not recommend this. But um, if you're behind, if you're behind or um, you just don't like it. You just don't like the Dirk, or they have like too many, too many tanks or building armor or whatever. Kraken P, Kraken double longsword. Okay, but once you have this, it's not just about W flash now. Okay, it's also this is where the ISO Q is mo comes into play. Okay, the ISO Q damage comes into play. Um, now, um, the next step, the next damage power spike. Okay, is after Kraken. Okay, um, we, this is when we hit the PD. Okay, this is where the gameplay changes a little bit. All right, so let's take a look. Why does it change a little bit? Well, you get oh, uh, you get your uh, E upgrade, which is important. Okay, I didn't cancel it there, but it's fine. Um, you get your E upgrade, which makes you go invisible, so you have more options. But uh, this is at the point where you're like, eh, you're like a level 13, level 12, level 11. You have points into E, and I'm gonna show you why we max E. Okay, so E gives you more move speed, more attack speed. The important part is the attack speed in the cooldown. Okay, um, not that the move speed is negligible, but this is the important part: the attack speed and the cooldown. Okay, and the reason why everyone and their mother is going cracking PD on Kaisa. If you look at pro builds, U.GG, whatever, they're going cracking PD, lethal temple. This is why. Okay, so your damage pattern, you'll start to notice that your ISO Q is no longer cutting it. Especially on like the Omega Tanky Frontline, let's say they're the Death Stance, Ninja Tabbies, Gore Jinker, Ravnus Hydra, you're like, what the fuck is this, bro? Iso Q will do like 20% of their health, okay? Uh, I'll actually do nothing. I mean, I don't know if we can give this dummy enough. Um, oh, you want to give him enough stats? Let's go, let's go. Let's see. This is like a, this is going to be your standard boy here, okay? Um, something like this, and then we give him like, uh, I don't know, like 100 armor because they have like 120 armor for no reason, okay? This is what Iso Q does. And you're like, what the fuck is this? Okay, it doesn't do anything because if you're just looking for ISO Q play, which is what you should be doing when you get your Q upgrade, it's not going to cut it anymore. So, what? How do you kill these guys? And the secret is stacking Lethal Temple and PD. Okay, you double dip. You get to stack both of these at the same time. Okay. So, when you have both of these stacks, we E in and we make a play. Okay, and that's the secret for the... If you're wondering why you do so well with Kai'Sa in lane with W Flash and so well at your Q upgrade because you can find the R spot and ISO Q them, right? But then when you hit the mid late game, you figure you can't figure out why you can't do damage on Kai'Sa. This is why. You need to stack this, make a play, okay? So the most basic pattern I can give you right now is fight breaks out. Don't immediately ulti in to the team fight unless you can one shot somehow. You can one shot the backline somehow, which is... Not always going to happen, not always the case. What you want to do is E to approach your closest target that can't obviously just one shot you. Ice Q, stack. And then you can, can you can finish with your second E, finish them off with your second E, and ulti in and one shot the backline with your stacks. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> now you can practice with this on the, on the in the practice tool or whatnot, but let's just make this like an ADC. I don't know, Kai's is 2,000 health, sure. 2,000 health, and then I have uh, 95 armor. Here, let's, let's take a look, okay? And I want to show you what it looks like. These are my items, okay? Kraken PD. I should have like uh, IE components coming out, okay? But let me show you what happens when we stack. Okay, we're going to W. And they're dead in like five hits. I didn't even queue, okay? So if you want to even like, let's say we want to even make it even even better, right? And then someone CC'd him. You RW, ISO Q. I know I like, you know, not smooth kiting, but you get, you get, the, you get the picture, okay? Now, if we were to, now, if you want to see, at level 16, these aren't your items, okay? This is your item, okay? And I do recommend uh, IE over quick blades pretty much always. Um, but yeah, let's let's let me show you what it looks like now, okay? You can even R in, you can even E in before, so you can one shot like this, and that's full zero, by the way. 
That's literally four to zero, right? Okay, that's your basic pattern. E into all in with lethal temple PD stacks. And what you can do is, um, if you want to OT in first to bait a spell or to bait a reaction, then E, you can do that too. I think it's a good default. Okay, so uh, this is what that will look like is like this. You stack up, you're gonna ult in, you're gonna Q, you're gonna auto attack, beta reaction, finish. <clears throat> or uh, ult in, beta reaction, E to chase. Okay, because they're gonna flash out, E out, whatever. Okay, <clears throat> so that's your, these are your basic PvP patterns for Kai'Sa. From the early game, W, W flash, to the mid game with your, uh, your Q upgrade, ISO Q, right? Um, if you buy the Dirk, it's definitely make sure you know how to ISO Q and stuff. If you skip that, go Kraken PD. It's just going straight to the Lethal Temple stacking with PD stacking. Okay. And then late game, um, if we want to talk about itemization, we're going to round this out with like, oftentimes it's a, a Lord Doms when they have frontline, which they always do, and a GA. Okay. And the reason why we go GA, not BT, not Runas, not whatever, is because it allows you to <coughs> stack as per usual. Ult in, one shot and trade your GA for a backline carry. And trade your GA for the backline carry. Okay? And the crazy part about this is that if you have flash and you trade your life for someone and you get GA'd, then after GA you flash. And you can press E. Okay, and it's lit. You can flash, press E, ISO Q, fight again, right? Um so that's why GA is so important. All right, um, and uh, one thing uh, that I haven't really talked about here, but I should mention is that with Kaisa, you need to find the ult in angle after you've stacked. Okay, once you've stacked, you need to find the guy you're going to go for next. Okay, because if you don't, if you don't, sometimes you're stacking the front line, it's not good enough. You need to, you need to dive in. Oftentimes with Kaisa, this is the strength of the champion is being able to dive in and pressure the front line. Okay, <clears throat> so. Without out of, with that out of the way, hopefully that uh, took like 10 or 15. <laughs> hopefully it didn't take too long. Let's look at some examples, okay? Okay, I have some Kai'Sa in lane damage examples for you guys. Okay, and remember we mentioned the damage comes from proc passive and W. Mostly the main part is W. The guy you W is the guy you're planning to kill, okay? So this is a basic default example. This is why you need uh, a teammate, by the way, who can um, CC. Is because on CC, you're going to W the guy and you're going to try and kill him. Okay? <clears throat> so if we look at this example, let's see if I can mute real quick. Okay? So when Pike charges his hook, we're going we're gonna to W. We're going to W the guy he hits and then proc passive, call it a day. Right? So ends up being a kill. Easy enough. Uh, the rest of the clip is just uh, us ganking the Draven. Okay? And then uh, now, if you want to see us use it, uh, if you want to see a more uh, uh, interesting example, the guy you use W on, remember, you want to combo with your teammate. Okay? The guy you use W on is the guy you want to kill. So, I have a Morgana. We want to use it on the guy that gets binded. Right? Uh, hopefully, the jungle or the EDC. Right? So, if you look at this, we're going to hold W. So, uh, there's a problem a lot of you guys have in lane. You just toss W out nilly willy like, you're W like Alistar or, or, or Zaya here or something. Like, you don't, you don't know who you want to kill yet until Morgana casts bind. Then you go to W, okay? So here, we're just waiting, and then you see the we see the bind, we W immediately. And then that's the guy we're going to kill. And you can see that as indeed a kill, okay? Um, and then let's look at our W example, okay? So remember I said, we're going to pick the spot to ulti, and then we're going to W at the target. Pick a very specific spot. So here you can see me pick one pixel below the Zaya, and then W midair, so you can proc passive, and then insta-kill, okay? And this is your RW idea. So the important part about this example that I wanted to show you guys was that we picked the spot to RW to kill the, uh, to kill the uh, um, what's it called, the Nami, okay? And then uh, at the end, we uh, ended up chasing the Seraphine with stacked Lito Temple and Iso Q. Notice that I am doing the Noon Quiver Pickaxe Dirk here, okay? So if you want to see it again, look, we are going to pick this spot, unhook, RW. After, I mean, obviously, um, once you practice these ideas, the first thing now that you want to focus on is not getting hit by bubble, by Seraphine E, by Seraphine O, by not, any CC, any kill ability. Then you can go make your play. So first we dodge your stuff. You have plenty of time to make your play. Pick this spot, one shot. Okay, pick the OT spot, W, midair, one shot. 
this is an interesting example okay this is an all-in 2v2 example so um if you don't know in a 2v2 bot lane the most the priority you want to aim the guy you want to aim in the 2v2 the highest priority target is going to be the adc okay and uh, what that means is if you see the enemy team aiming your support but you and your support can aim the adc you've won okay and then aiming means you can hit everything right so um i'm going to show you uh the clip here with me and Nalas, and there's an entire wave in front of us okay and uh we're going to win this fight for a very uh specific reason <clears throat> okay and this is the reason it's one okay now why is it one because <clears throat> have we hit everything well, Nala's hook is pretty much everything. Yeah, he, he's not going to get the auto attack, but he's pretty much hit everything. And can I hit everything? Well, RW is guaranteed, as we've seen. And in fact, you can RW flash or something crazy to guarantee. So, we have hit everything. Therefore, S0 is already dead on my screen. Barring some kind of like exhaust or the jungle one-shotting me or something. But they're not playing like the jungles here, okay? So, barring some kind of exhaust, which they don't have. Um, maybe some kind of heal bait when we have no ignite. We have already won. The flat 2 of 2. It's done. Done deal. This is how you recognize if you play a lot of Kaisa, if you wanna if you wanna like main Kaisa or whatever, you can recognize this very quickly the more you practice this. We hit the Alistar, we hit the we hit the uh sorry, the Nautilus Q. I can guarantee that Kaisa W done. Now, the thing you need to focus on is don't get hit by their stuff, which is going to be Karma and Power Q, Ezreal uh QWR, whatever. Okay. So if you watch this fight, it's already remember, it's already won. We've already killed him on my screen. Right, we've already hit him with ISO Q, we've already hit him with a W, and then now the rest the rest of this is just finishing the job. Right? And if you take a look at it, it's not very close. I'm still half health. And the Ezreal's gone. Right? But if you look at when I ulted in, it seems a little bit scary, right? So when I coach you guys, um, you guys are like gold plat diamond, and you see this, and I'm like, oh, that was you could have killed his ass. Uh, you guys are like, what? This is what? Okay, we can land, we can guarantee landing everything, and they would have to land everything and return on me faster in order to win. I'm, I'm guaranteed killing this Ezreal right now. Okay, because because Nautilus has already hit him with his uh, hook. Okay, so equivalent would be like, uh, my Nami has already bubbled Ezreal, or uh, you, get the, you get the point. Okay, so I think this fight is very important because um, this is something that uh, a lot of you guys may not have ingrained in your head. Like, you need to be able to recognize it the instant Nautilus is like touching him. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> let's go next fight. Ah, classic. Um, this is one where the support ran mid or something, or Karma top. So we're going to dive him, and this is pretty much guaranteed. A lot of times what you'll see with Kai'Sa is that you can, in fact, trade a bunch of HP while they're under tower, then come back with ulti. Okay? So in this case, we're going to roll up, and I can't hit this W here, right? Like, there's so many minions in the way. It's kind of impossible. Don't use W. If you can't hit it, don't use it. Because remember, um, your W is going to be used on the guy that you're going to kill. And if you can't use it, if you can't kill it, if you can't use it yet, don't use it. Just you don't. A lot of you guys just toss your W into space. Don't use it. Okay. So we're just gonna trade, and then we're gonna find the angle to come back later. Our W. Okay. And uh, that's kind of like uh, the trick. Okay. Hold on to your W, guys. You guys, the the number one mistake I see with uh, a lot of like lower rank Kaisa is they just fucking fire a W like it's like like a five second quarter. Like they fire the W like it's a Ezreal Q. Okay, in certain lanes where you don't need the W, like you have no combo, let's say you're playing like Kaiser Jan or something, and then they're playing like, I don't know, like Ezreal Leona, you can W Ezreal, sure, for like poke or whatever, right? Maybe even better your, your Kaiser Karma, and you want to W combo off your Karma and Power Q onto the Ezreal, go for it, okay? But if you're playing with Nalus, Leona, whatever, you need W to combo, okay? Um, your teammate has guaranteed lockdown um, or something like that. You need, you need W to combo. You need a whole W, okay? Look, what's going on here? I think we're getting ganked. Omega ganked here. <clears throat> you can see me getting beat up at first, right? So I'm looking for my ISO Q angle and my uh, W angle, and then we, we, we kill someone, right? You can even W flash if you think it's an angle. But uh, I'm just going to touch the first closest guy. <clears throat> oh, there it is. You just wait until you can W, ISO Q, proc passive. Done. Do disappear, right? And this is your this is your bread and butter up until PD, uh, team fights, lethal tempo, lethal tempo stacking. This is your bread and butter, okay? Especially if you go the Dirk route. And by the way, I would not recommend finishing the collector unless they have no um, <clears throat> unless they have no um, front line, okay? <clears throat> okay, let's look at this fight. This is like right after. Oh, I'm looking for a uh, in angle. But here's the thing. Here's the very important thing. You notice that, remember, our play at this point in time is not PD stacking yet. It's ISO Q. And when I W this Ezreal, right, I could ulti it now 
and try to outplay Riven with Flash and Exhaust and E, but it doesn't seem very clear. The, 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 the solution did not, was not very clear to me, right? For, like right now, solution is not clear. Um, so what you need to do is wait. Because let's say, for example, what if Ezreal E's away and now you're stuck fighting Riven by yourself and you have no tools? It's not not looking too good, right? So if you don't have like an immediate plan going in, um, you should not press R. And I think a lot of you guys have this problem too. This is the second most, uh, or maybe even first most, uh, uh, common mistake you see with Kaisa. You guys are just like, I'm just gonna R in because I feel like it's good, and then you guys like die. Okay, you just wait until you have your very specific play, which is ISO Q. Okay, so I gotta wait three seconds. That's fine. That's totally fine. And I'm gonna look for an E in, a flash in to get my ISO Q going. So here I'm looking to E in for my ISO Q. This guy walks up to my ISO Q. We're just gonna kill his ass. You can use ulti to dodge stuff, like you see me. Um, I'll dodge his third Q here, but yeah, that's the idea. And we get another ISO Q. It's lit. And then we E in. It's 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 very, very what's it called? Um, very natural. Once you start learning, it's all about ISO Q and W. Oh, that was, I mean, W flash, ISO Q, I guess, right there, right? Everything, your E is there to either disengage or enable hitting W ISO Q until PD, uh, <laughs> until you have PD, uh, PD stacking, okay? Then your E is there to enable your all in with PD and Lethal Temple, okay? So think about movement as a, a means to enable damage. LT exists to enable your W in lane. LT exists, uh, Flash exists to enable your W in lane. Flash, LT exists, and E exists to find ISO Q when you have Kraken Dirk, right? Um, and then finally, when you have Kraken PD stacked up, E and LT exist to enable your auto attack play on the back line or on the front line, whoever you're hitting, okay? So think of this movement as um, not just like vaguely trying to help or get closer or whatever. It's I'm there to enable something some kind of damage output, or I'm trying to um, disable their damage output. I'm trying to run away from something. I'm trying to dodge something. Like you saw me earlier in one of the earlier clips, I E to dodge uh, Karma and Power Q, and I use Flash to dodge as your R, okay? Movement should be used for uh, one of these two um, ideas in every fight. So if you're wondering what is wrong with my movement abilities, we watch your fights, did you do one of these two things? Here we have, uh, let's take a look at the situation here. Here is some kind of 5v5 breaking out in the river near Baron. And our Ramus wants to base. He's like half health or something. <clears throat> so we're, we're going to just kite it out and stack on the closest guy. And we're going to hold E, okay? We're just casually stacking. And then once we've stacked up, oh, that's a guy we can stack on, right? Then we can look for something juicy, okay? We got stacks and we're looking, right? <clears throat> Notice that lethal tempo stacks will fall off one at a time. So <clears throat> this Quirky went in, right? Sorry if I keep uh, rewinding, but Quirky went in. Oh, this guy just gets iso queued and instantly gets run down. And here we can, there's actually an opportunity here. I don't know if you guys see it. We took the easy path out, okay? Easy path out being just hit the closest guy. Can't really go wrong with that, okay? But there was in fact more <clears throat> in that fight. Here we're just cleaning up off of Ramistan. There was actually more in this fight. Can you see what it is? Remember our game plan is we go in with the uh the uh lethal tempo pd stacks so if you take a look at this and who do we go on we go on the back line okay remember we're not not so much about iso as we are about pd lethal tempo if you see the angle here you can uh, we will pause pause the video and see if you can find the angle but now that i say something it should be quite obvious right there's an angle oops let me get my pen out here There is an angle to R, W, Ezreal, and auto attack him to death with our stacks, okay? And you will force a response. You will force an exhaust, you will force his E, something. In which case, you can come back, kill, kill the Riven, you can stop watch, okay? You have options. But um, if you think it's not good enough, you don't have to do it. You just need to be looking for these ideas. Basically, these are stacked up. Immediately look for the back line in an E play, okay? And remember that when you auto attack them, your E cooldown will come back faster, right? <clears throat> Okay, here's a fight in their bot side jungle here. Another 5v5. Let's see, it's relevant. We're going to E in to try and stack on the closest guy. Unfortunately, um, the hook didn't connect, so I kind of wasted my E here. But remember, we're trying to look to stack on someone here, right? <clears throat> so this is a bit awkward, right? But yeah, if you can't, if you can't find anything, then uh, it's best to just chill out. Because notice, notice I took like 1,600 health just like existing nearby. Right? My initial E in to, you know, stack on Karma and ISO Q her didn't work. So now we have no way to approach. We just need to wait. You need to wait five seconds instead of standing in the AOE. You notice how, like, 
I'm like standing in the AOE. I got hit by Ezreal. Ulti, I got hit by a random Ezreal Q. And by the time I actually found my E play, I am down to 600 health. Okay. What you need to do is you need to, you just need to be very patient, especially in this, um, especially in like season 12, 13, whatever. Everything kind of just like kills you, right? Just vague, vague damage is just killing you, right? Like if you just look at it, I'm dead to like, look, look, look. Okay. So Ezreal Ulti, 450 health okay that q just missed me by the way barely missed me random q another 350 okay i'm already down to half health random corky missile another 520 health bro i'm dead basically without having done any damage right so um <clears throat> when in doubt just be very patient and look to e into the closest guy and start stacking on them with iso q uh sorry start stacking on them and you can iso q them but if you can't find it or if you wasted your e you just got you gotta wait be patient no point in taking a thousand damage because you just need to right click in, right click into the fight. That's how you grief the team fight, so to speak. I could have lost GA here very easily, right? Ah, and this is the uh, the interesting fight here, okay? So remember what we talked about, okay? Before we watch this fight, remember what we talked about. We're going to E to enable our ISO Q and to start stacking our uh pd and our lethal temple and then once all that is stacked we're gonna look to ulti and continue the play with e lethal temple phantom dancer okay so let's watch this okay we eat in start stacking i got three and three. <clears throat> oh, we got we got stacks now so we can commit right we can just flash over, just finish, finish over. I auto attack the word there, it's pretty bad. But as you can see, this is also a part of the GA play where uh, if you have GA, you can start uh, being a psychopath, right? And uh, one thing you need to note is that with GA, um, when you get GA'd, notice something interesting. I lost the PD stacks, but I still have six stacks of Lethal Temple coming out of GA, okay? So very, very important uh, nuance there is, this is where you can trade one for one for the carry and you come out and still be able to play the game with um, your E, right? So that's why GA is so, um, is very relevant on Kai'Sa, e, uh, is because is you can dive the backline like this, okay? So I know it's a bit ugly, but you can see all the concepts were there, okay? And how did I know we could immediately ulti this Ezreal when he eat in? Is because I already knew I was almost stacked PD Lethal Temple. Because this is our play. If I have zero stacks, this is looking a lot more suspicious. Okay? Zero stacks, trying to go from zero to six stacks is like not happening. This is how you throw, probably. Right? So, yeah. This is what I wanted to uh, show you guys. Okay? Is uh, once you have the stacks, then you press E, get the uh, extra attack speed, and you can flash in, do, do whatever you need to do to win the fight. Right? So, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I have for you today. It's really funny. I have, <laughs> look at all this uh, 2022 Kaisa I had. This is late early in this year. This is my original uh, clips guide, but these are all kind of uh, old stuff with AP Nash's Muramana. I should have made a video a long time ago, but um, yeah, hopefully uh, you guys found this uh, interesting slash you learned something. Um, or maybe it inspired you to play Kaisa, or uh, hopefully if you're like Masters and above, maybe you learned about Lethal Temple PD stacking. Um, but yeah, uh, if you didn't learn anything, I'm sorry, just downvote and tell me how bad I am in the comments. Yeah, this is against a bunch of bunch of uh, D1 Master shitters, right? So um, if the video sucked because I was playing against noobs, my bad. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, Hopefully you guys learned something um, and uh, or sorry, <laughs> hopefully you guys in still enjoy this kind of content. I don't even know who's watching my videos anymore, but uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to see more, definitely say something in the comments, mention me on Discord, whatever. There's a dude uh, that I played TFT with and he's like, I want to see a Varus, a Varus video on God. We'll probably make a Varus video just for that guy, okay? Um, because I'm kind of... Um, it's kind of making whatever, okay? This is 2023 is our year to come back. Now that uh, the ADC role is less depressing than it used to be. So um, yeah, thank you for watching as always, okay? I will see you guys next time.